come back and I'm doing the Bibbleman track. Um, up to the stakes a little bit, 1,005 kilometers from Albany in southern WA to Perth. Saying goodbye to Albany. It's about to be dark and I haven't set up anything because I just arrived at Sam Hat. Woo! I'm really excited. Day one, big success. Um, yeah, you can probably tell. I just can't stop smiling. I'm really happy. <laughs> the second day of the Bibbleman. I had a very broken sleep. I don't know about sleeping in the shelters. It doesn't stop the wind and it doesn't stop mosquitoes. And I had a couple of them being really annoying last night. I even covered my face with like 80% deep. I'm just gonna set up my tent. I think I prefer my tent. Also, I think the tent's warmer. I've just made it to this place. So pretty. Look at this. Mountain Bird Beach over there. And that's Mountain Bird Island. Feeling a little bit tired because I'm so unfit but hoping that I get stronger quickly this is Tor Bay Inlet and I don't need to wade through it it's nice the next few days are going to involve a bit of sand walking which I actually don't mind I think I might change my mind about that as I go. But I really like the, um, the soft sand. It's like easier on your joints and you get to be right next to the ocean. I am at my night two campsite. I am uh, tenting it tonight. That's my tent over there. Oh. I think like human humans really separate events in their life through place. It's that like change of location is what um, you use to make chapters in your memory. That's why I like sort of with my life, kind of moving around quite a bit because then you create new chapters all the time and you retain the memories more easily. But when you're bushwalking, you just do that, but on like a micro scale. So you're creating a new chapter every hour because you're just changing, you're like in a new place. So your brain is like really busy absorbing um, your surroundings. And so when you finish the day, you're like, yeah, all I did was walk, but I have like 10 chapters that I remember. It's going to be a lovely sunny day today, I expect. Oh my goodness, approaching some gorgeous views. Look at this. Wow. Finding it hard to get anywhere today because I keep popping out at these spectacular views. Suddenly you can see for like more than 180 degrees and it's super unexpected and like so exciting when it happens. of a dilemma. I'm at West Cape Howe campsite, which is where I had planned to stay tonight, intended to keep going. I crossed an inlet yesterday when I was walking along the beach and I was fine. I didn't even have to take off my boots. But then today, um, I heard that they opened that inlet at 9am this morning. As of today, it's not passable and you have to do the detour. And I had no idea. And I just managed to sneak in. So that's pretty lucky. Still haven't managed to get one on camera, but I've seen eight snakes. It's day three, eight, and six of them highly venomous. I have mixed feelings about this stunning sunset because I'm enjoying watching it, but I also need to be at my camp really, really soon. I made it to Nalakai, set up my tent and, um, my favorite thing has happened. There's nobody else here. I knocked over 30 Ks today, so I am toyed. Did some stargazing last night. You know that feeling you get when you're looking up at the stars, you get all existential and feel really tiny. That's pretty much as spiritual as I get, sitting under the stars. I am doing a 
notoriously boring part of the track, which is basically walking for about five to six hours along Bitumen to get around Wilson's Inlet. There used to be a boat. Now there is one Bibbleman track volunteer who gives people rides across, but um, he's in Perth. I'd probably been going along the road for all of 10 minutes when Peter, my guardian angel, pulls over in a ute. He gave me a lift all the way around the inlet. It saved me about six hours of walking along the road. From up here on this rock, you can see where I've come from. I started all the way over there in Albany and I walked along this cliff top. And then this morning, I woke up just about here walked to the inlet and then got a lift around the inlet and on this side this is what's to come the next four days or so before i start heading northwards and away from the coast i am going to jump in the water that swim was the highlight of the walk so far Wow. Check out my funny socks. They're meant to prevent blisters and so far I haven't got any blisters on my toes so I guess they're working. This is one of the most well signposted walks I've ever done. Like I have not needed to look at my GPS once to see where I'm going. Amazing work. Bibbleman volunteers and people who manage it. I am super impressed. Beginning of day five um, on the coast. I am um, about to cross an inlet. I should be just in time to uh, cross without getting my feet wet. Picking up my first food drop tomorrow, hopefully. Um, I realized that I posted it kind of late. I'm hoping they have it. Today, I feel like I've got over that initial Kind of fear. I think the last few days I've been thinking a little bit like I've told everyone that I'm doing this thing and what if I don't make it which is still a real live possibility and I feel like today's the first day where I'm like I reckon I can like it all feels possible now. Now how much would you pay for dinner with a view like this in Sydney? Not bad. Sometimes when I'm looking at it I feel like I have to close my eyes or look away because it's so pretty. I'm like, okay, I've hit capacity of how much beauty I can handle, my brain can handle. There's a little friend on the trail. Today apparently is actually the hardest trail day. It's a lot of soft sand, a lot of sand dunes. It's right, I'm feeling up to the challenge. I think that's the water that I get to canoe across. After I follow that path for another few Ks. Okay, one of these lucky fellas is gonna shepherd me across that. My clumsy self is unsure about this. Bay. I made it. And right at this very moment, someone's hot chippies are in the deep fryer. Hmm. My little tent over there. No food parcel here for me. I bought this stuff. Unfortunately, I may be a little hungry for the next couple of days. I'm sorry for shoving chips in my face the whole time. Welcome to 
WA where you can park literally on the beach at the water. Wild. I couldn't sleep this morning. I woke up at 4.45, so I just got up. I'm making myself my oats. Pretty nice not to have to use my fuel and have just tap water at the ready. This is all my stuff in a chaotic mess before I pack it into the bag. Food. This is like my miscellaneous bag. I did have this bag, but it broke. It's my tent there. This is a water bladder that I really wish I didn't bring because I haven't used it once. This water I use for my drinking. This one I use to rehydrate my meals. I chuck my meal in there about halfway through the day and start rehydrating. My friend came to visit while I was brushing my teeth. going to go to Giants campsite tonight. I just met a lovely couple on the trail who were the dunny donors for that campsite. <laughs> At every campsite there's a toilet and every toilet has a plaque saying who donated it. My second food box is at Walpole. There's every chance that it's not gonna be there. Why did I not post these boxes like just two weeks earlier? Urgh. the afternoon walking inland and quite a long way from the ocean now. This is the first bit of farmland I've seen on the walk so far. We have entered the land of the seriously big trees. Hello! And emerging from the dunny, you can see the dunny donors right here. Thanks Denise and Alan. It is a lovely dunny. Morning. I'm in bed. It keeps raining. I've been awake since 4.30 when it started and I'm glad it's not too heavy yet. As mother nature tends to do, she has completely defied my expectations. The sun has come out and is lighting up all of the raindrops on the trees and plants and it's spectacular. I've made it to the Franklin River campsite which by all accounts is one of the most beautiful on the trail and it's not disappointing. I got to Walpole and it was just in time because after my last video, the heavens opened and it got cold and rainy for the rest of the day. This morning, it has been coming down all morning and we're expecting to get 50 mils today, which is a lot of rain. My food parcel did not arrive here either. It's my second one that hasn't turned up. It's all right, we'll figure it out. It's all part of the journey. I just dragged myself out to go and get some more supplies. I'm gonna try and fill up on veggies tonight and also chocolate because you never die if you've got chocolate, right? That is a beautiful sight, isn't it? I was so hoping that would happen before I had to set out again. I have my first barista made coffee off the trail this morning. So long, Walpole. How sick is this log? It's like covered in tiny fluoro orange mushrooms. It's like a, a party log. It is a wild and windy day on the track today. The sun's been playing hide and seek with me all day. So I get very excited in these little moments where a little patch of blue sky appears. So nice. I have a tent that can only stand up when there are pegs in it and the pegs are in the ground, which makes them terrible for any kind of 
shelter like this where there is a platform that you're just meant to put your tent on. So I've managed to rig up my tent on this platform and get it to stand up by shoving the pegs into the sides of the hut. When I started setting it up, I was like, there is no way this is gonna work. And I don't know if it works, but I think it's gonna work enough. It's a little mouse. I went for a walk out to the coast yesterday afternoon and there's just these big boulders that you can sit on and watch the, the waves and it was a wild afternoon and the waves were, they were dark and noisy and it was like one of the most kind of profound times I've had so far, I reckon. Um, yeah, really special. Look what I just found. We are doing some sand dune walking today. Ooh, yo, yo, look at this. Windy beach walk. It's a bittersweet moment for me right now as I finish up Mandalay Beach and start to head northwards. That was my last glimpse of the south coast of WA. I'm now officially heading north. I loved the south coast. It was breathtaking. By all accounts, I've kind of done the hardest bit of the trail now. Made it to wool bales. Got my um, dodgy tent set up going again. Seems to work. I think I might be running out of fuel. So I had cold oats this morning instead of hot and I like them better. I just never tried them cold. They were delicious. This afternoon I am watching the clouds. So peaceful and quiet. My phone's got to mostly be off at the moment because I'm trying to conserve battery. But I thought I'd show you guys this little side trip that I'm doing up to Mount Pingarup. It's only a couple of hundred meters above um, sea level, but the Pingarup plains are down there and they're really flat. So I guess any elevation you can get is um, quite a lot of elevation around here. These signs are very exciting because you see them right at the end of your day when you know you're just a couple of hundred meters away from your shelter coming to you live from the top of mount chance this is a really nice campsite which i think again i have to myself which will make it five nights that i have not had to share a shelter in a lot of the logbooks the people um who write in them are sort of like oh i'm by myself again tonight oh well and i just can't even comprehend that mindset i'm like always crossing my fingers that i have it to myself but there you go i guess some people just more sociable want to make friends day 13 and i am walking through the famous pingarup plains in some parts of the year these are completely um waterlogged and you have to wade through um at like knee height sometimes even higher and i'm very glad that they're not flooded today there are beautiful flowers along here too. Um, it's not wildflower season at the moment, but I guess there are still some that hang on for, for longer than spring because um, there are just some really incredible colors happening. I have arrived at what I suspect may be my favorite campsite on the trail so far. It's called Dog Pool. There is a beautiful river running past and so you just get that white noise of the river as you fall asleep and I thought uh, to celebrate being somewhere so beautiful and again alone yes um, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea even though I'm running pretty low on fuel I haven't seen a single other human being since Mandalay Beach that's a fair few days and I actually think it's the longest I've gone without seeing another person ever
sort of just in a different kind of state of mind, I guess, the past few days, starting to, I guess, get into kind of the meatier questions of rather than like, can I make it? It's more like, why am I trying to? There's lots of track lingo and um, like little hiking sayings that you hear all the time. But I think my favorite that I've heard so far is the trail provides. It's true in, in really practical ways. You find what you need. Other people will give you what you need. The huts and shelters will give you what you need, but also in a metaphysical sense as well, right? The trail gives you the space and the quiet that you need often to find answers that you're looking for. So each afternoon on the trail, I stop at some point and do this. Um, and this is basically me putting my dinners that I have pre-made and then dehydrated um, into a bottle with some water to rehydrate them. It only needs probably two minutes um, boiling and it's ready to go. I'm actually afraid to show my face at this point. Um, it has been nine days since I had a shower. It's potentially the filthiest I've ever been in my life. Um, my hair is like glue. I'm filthy. Here it is, 53 meters of Gloucester tree and I am gonna climb it. Boy, this is pretty high. <laughs> Made it. <laughs> wow. I guess I am a little bit afraid of heights. I've always wondered what the view is like at the top of these tall carries though. Well, I'm at Crossings Bakery in Pemberton, which allegedly has a delicious vegan pie that I was very excited about. It's meant to close at three. It is currently 2.56 PM and I hustled to get here and it's closed. So, I have feelings about that. It is day 19. I have had a delicious sleep in a real bed. Um, two hot showers, a lot of food. I'm about to go and get a coffee. I have my vegan pie and I have my big soy coffee and all is forgiven. I have like a really niggly knee, which in the last few days has become pretty bad. Um, so I'm just dosing myself on anti-inflammatories and that seems to be doing the job. Teepee village. Today is a really nice, peaceful day on the trail. I'm caffeinated, well fed, it's really still, it's sunny. I'm taking my sweet time. I don't feel like I'm on a mission or in a rush today. I'm really just soaking everything up and enjoying myself. Very calm and content. Walking through someone's field right now. Some lovely private landowner who's obviously allowed the bibblemen to come through their paddock. So hats off to you, uh, whoever you are. at Beetle Up, a home for night number 19. Kalamunda, here we come. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the location of these toilets? This is just a loo. It just happens to be smack bang in the middle of the most beautiful, pristine bush. Uh, 
I'm just watching the canopy. Look at this. See that orange light shining onto the top of the trees? It's kind of blowing my mind a little bit. Well, this morning, almost immediately after I started walking, I came to Beetle Up Falls. I've been singing a lot to myself this morning, mostly my dad's music. I really love his songs and I know all the words to them. Well, terrain doesn't get any friendlier than this. Wide and clear and flat, as far as the eye can see. So just before I leave this morning, I thought I would give you a little tour of what a typical shelter or hut looks like. Um, this is one of the ones that has a, the bunk design. So as you can see, there's a platform in the middle and then on either side, there is a, a lower platform and a higher platform table. Get some information on a board. There's always a couple of boxes that you can keep your food in. Some cleaning tools, the most important thing, uh, a couple of water tanks. That's a pretty typical little hut. This one is called Boarding House. Today is an exciting day because I get to reach the halfway point. I actually cannot believe that I'm only halfway. I feel like I've been walking for my whole life. Look who's reached halfway! And I have walked 500 kilometers and I will walk 500 again just to be the woman who walked a thousand kilometers and did the Bibbleman. That's almost a month of walking every single day, just getting up, eating some oats, and walking and walking and walking and walking and walking. Sometimes I struggle to remember a time before the trail. When you have less than half to go, everything seems so possible and so easy. It's like, I've already done more than half. So I'm just finishing it off now, really. I just saw my first emus. I love emus so much. They were running so dorkily. But I didn't get to get them on camera, they were too quick. I am on my way to Tom Road campsite. So I thought I might give you guys a little tour of my humble abode, uh, being the tent that I sleep in most nights on the trail. Um, here it is. And inside, you can see, um, I've got my sleeping mat here, and then uh, my sleeping bag. Um, and my sleeping bag liner, um, my pillow, which I have mixed feelings about. I don't use it every night. And then down the side is where I store my stuff. How was that for the world's fastest home tour? <laughs> and this is my garden for this evening, which has a lovely big frog pond. I got up earlier than usual this morning, partly because the moon was so bright, I managed to pack up my whole camp and make breakfast um, without using my torch. I just passed through Donnelly River Village, which is kind of like a village that only exists during the holiday season. So there are all these beautiful little colorful decorated huts but no one around, um, kind of like a ghost town. The general store was open and I got a food drop from there. So my bag's heavy again, but full of delicious food. Check out this broken open ant's nest. You can see like all of the little trails and tunnels that are inside. That's a dead brew, all right. Oh, what got you, buddy? There are about 20 red-tailed black cockatoos just hanging out in this tree. You can hear them screeching. Well, the hut tonight has 
has a pretty specky view. So those of us that have tents have set up our tents inside the hut. And then seven, <laughs> seven grannies rock up, no tents. Uh, so they have to sleep in the hut as well. So tonight we have seven elderly ladies. little shelter. Uh, some of the older ladies have intimated that those with tents should be sleeping in them outside and those with tents uh, have intimated that everyone on the bib should have a tent and have the ability to sleep outside uh, and it's actually a first come first serve basis. Beef on the bib. <laughs> little bit bad for the others but I have to start early today because I have to get to bailing up to see a certain somebody whose birthday is today. Wow this really makes getting up early worth it. Well fam, exciting things have happened. Here I am in an actual house, sitting by an actual fire with a bottle of wine, a fresh salad, some spaghetti bolognese, which we're kind of used to by now, and most importantly, Gigi! <laughs> she came all the way to bailing up just to hang out with me for her birthday. Yay! Yay! I did a little bit of walking, not much, with mum, maybe like half an hour. And she has turned around and gone back to the car. Um, so I'm out here by myself. Beautiful, very different surroundings now. We've gone from the big carry forests to a lot of like farmland, rolling hills, autumnal uh, colours. Seeing my mum has put me in such a good mood. <sighs> I'm so happy. I don't know what these are, but they're so cute. There were three of us in the hut last night and at about 1 or 2 a.m. it started raining really heavily um, and it was felt so cozy to be tucked up under the shelter. I actually opened my tent and just had the fly so that I could hear and see the rain. This morning I'm walking through the most beautiful raindrop covered forest. I really love it when the sun comes out after rain. The forest here has all been burnt not that long ago. Um, so all the trees are black and there's no undergrowth. Um, it's pretty amazing but you can, you can see that there are some uh, shoots of green starting to come back. The whole effect is kind of eerie and um, really strange, really unlike anything I've walked through so far. What do you think it says about me that I've had The Curse of Mill Haven by Nick Cave and Futon Couch by Missy Higgins in my head for the past three days? That my music taste is whack. I think I'm a little bit lonely. I feel restless and a little bit, um, I don't know. I don't know. Like I need something and I'm not sure what it is or how to get it. <laughs> it's being a big sook. <laughs> the little red breasted robins. How beautiful are they? Uh. 
Look at all these old microwaves that are letter boxes in Mumble Up. <laughs> Happy girl! This is the first time I have had a hut all to myself since before Pemberton um, and I was not expecting it at all. I was going to set my tent up in the shelter but even before I had started making dinner I saw the mouse. It was so bold it was just sitting on my pack trying to get into my pack while I was watching it and I was like excuse me so i ended up setting up my tent and i could hear the little mouse rustling around the tent eventually i think it decided that there was no way it was gonna access my snacks so it retreated i kind of spooked myself out during the night because because it was so quiet you could hear my even my breath sounded like really noisy and i suddenly imagined hearing someone whisper to me from outside my tent like right next to my head on the other side of the tent and I really spooked myself. Today I am going to my second last track town, um, Collie, which is also the biggest population 7,000-ish. <laughs> Ooh, this hostel is so good. It's so pretty. There's like this beautiful central courtyard and a shared kitchen. They give you your own shampoo and conditioner and soap, multiple towels. And there's a, a clothesline outside. Oh my god, the shower was so hot and I'm so clean. Now this place is amazing. My second last food box. My char grilled broccolini and enough salad to feed a small army. This may have also just happened. Day 30 um, and before I hit the trail this morning, I just have to give a massive shout out. The Black Diamond Lodge in Collie. I'm not one to plug places, but this deserves it. Beautiful misty morning today. All right, we are officially done with our Collie detour and we are heading north. Check this out, beautiful lush green bush. Completely burnt out black and orange bush. This must be really recently burnt because there's hardly any grain at all and you can smell the smoke. This is actually the first diversion that I'm gonna have to actually do. Every other time it's been an inlet diversion that I've just kind of ignored, but this one cannot be ignored. Well, I ate four bagels today. I feel like I'm on the Pinger Up Plains again this morning. This is different. Day 31. The mornings are getting so cold now. Surprise, I have actual hair that is not always in plaits. I washed it yesterday, so I'm kind of just enjoying having cleanish hair. You probably can't hear it in the background, but there's this, apparently it's like a conveyor belt. It's so loud, um, I, 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 I'm still like ages away from it and I could hear it like 20 k's that way. It just like permeates the whole sound of the bush. It's just like a Anyway, that'll be interesting to see up close. Must be super loud. I tell you a joke. What did one saggy boob say to the other saggy boob? If we don't get some support soon, people are gonna think we're nuts. <laughs> Someone wrote that in one of the logbooks. Well, here it is. I kind of thought it might be cooler than this. It just looks like a bridge. 
This is all part of um, bauxite mining in the Darling Ranges. And there are uh, two operations, at Saddleback and Maradong. And um, this conveyor belt links them up. Just found this spooky little thing on the trail. Oh, actually, I think I know what it means. That says 700 because that's how many kilometers we've done. Very clever. We are backing up our 37 kilometer day yesterday with an even larger one today. 40.5 kilometers between Yordamung and Ducanelli. I think it's swim time for Rubes. Swim is done. Swim was great. 100% worth it. It is cold in there and now I feel so refreshed and clean because it's been a few days since a shower too. Tonight I'm between two huts um, just on the side of the path. That is actually the path right there. Um, I found a little flat piece of ground and set up my tent and um, this just means that I will be able to get to dwelling up around lunchtime tomorrow instead of mid-afternoon because um, I've got to pick up a food box and see if there's room at the caravan park for me. And tonight it is beans and rice for dinner. This morning is like actually a difficult slog up and down some, uh, some hills. I won't call them mountains, large hills <laughs> um, on my way into dwelling up. Someone's been so kind as to tell us that we get reception here. So I'm in Dwelling Up, which is my last track town. After this, it's bush all the way to Perth. And this afternoon I picked up my last food box. And I realize I've never done like a food box unboxing for you. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. It's not very exciting. Here we have seven days worth of food. The idea of carrying all of this does not fill me with excitement. Every day there are two snacks, um, always oats for breakfast. And then the dinners vary a little bit. That's a beans and rice, a pasta with no sauce. That's interesting. I wonder why I did that. Dal and rice. I've already got a packet of Oreos that I haven't even touched. So. I may donate these to the camp kitchen. This is going to be so difficult to carry. At a late night, I was in bed at like 8 p.m. <laughs> um, there was a lot of noise happening in that caravan park last night. So I am glad to be getting back out into the wilderness today. My pack is significantly heavier. I'm struggling just to walk down to the cafe. <laughs> let alone the next 20 kilometers. This is the most adorable woggle I've seen. <laughs> Hand drawn. I've been thinking about how I'm gonna go re-assimilating to life in the big city. This is so much my pattern now, just getting up and walking in silence for hours where this crunch crunch of my feet is pretty much most of what I hear all day. When other people are around, it feels really overstimulating. Like I'll have a conversation or two. And I'm like, cool, that's enough for another week. <laughs> when these bits of grass tree are on the ground like this, for some reason, it always just reminds me of cockroach wings. Like that shininess as well. I don't know, it kind of grosses me out. Quite a lot of this northern section involves walking along decommissioned railway lines, which is lovely and most of the time quite flat. So cold right now. I was like, I just need to get up and start moving. It's the only way I can get warm. I had a really nice time last night around the campfire, had some hiking chat. The sort of chat where if you weren't into hiking, you would find it extremely boring. Up the mountain we go. Made it up Mount Wells. And there is something here that looks climbable. Can't quite see the view off the mountain, but I'm told that at Whitehorse Hills, 
um, there is some more spectacular vistas. I just ran into a hiker coming the other way and I said hello and the first thing she said was come and look at this leaf I found <laughs> and we um, we stood there together and stared at this leaf and then she said goodbye and walked off like only on the trail <laughs> is that a normal interaction. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if I'm truly a warm-blooded creature. The sun came out, so I just dropped everything. <laughs> and I'm just sitting in it. This grass tree is art. Look at that. I reckon there's gonna be a bit of a view from the top of that. Join me for the big reveal. Oh, wow, I love this section, that's a funky boulder. We approach another diversion. Dead grass trees are the sunflowers of the desert. I just climbed Mount Cook, which is the highest point on the Bibbulmun track. Still not that high. It was still kind of more of a hill, but it was really pretty. It was really overcast up there. The sun's kind of come out now, but up there it was raining a little bit and it was really windy and like super moody, which was kind of nice. I had a good sleep. It wasn't too cold again. Um, there were two guys at the campsite. We had a campfire and there was also a little puppy there. He was very timid and um, worried. I still have two more hills to go today before I get to a campsite called Monadnox, which is a weird name. Monadnox. I'm not worried, but I reckon I'm going to eat all my food. I think I'll be fine. I'll have enough. Even if I go a day without eating, then I get to Perth and I can eat my body weight in food. Cockroach wings. 37 days on the Bibbleman track. Currently summiting my second peak of the day. I actually think I underestimated these uh, large hills a little bit. Maybe we can call them mountains. when I woke up and I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. Don't make me do it. But I did it. This is a really nice campsite. Check out the view from the table. Sitting on the side of the highway with my pack, which has my undies tied to it to dry out. <laughs> See that red sign over there? It says 68 kilometers to Kalamunda. That's the end. My two favorite times of day to walk is first thing in the morning and this time, which is about 3.30 uh, or four o'clock, just before it, the sun starts setting and everything's glowing, that beautiful orange. I think that's Mount Dale that I'm going up tomorrow. 35 kilometers today and I got to Mount Dale campsite and I have it all to myself and I had totally um, given up on the idea of getting another campsite to myself because it's so busy in the northern region but this beautiful campsite full of grass trees and there are kangaroos and rock wallabies everywhere I've got my dinner on to boil so I guess I'm just gonna have my little campfire and reflect on the journey that's been just started climbing Mount Dale and as you could probably tell from my runny nose, it's freezing. Guess what? 
I poured out my food bag today, this morning, just to check what my rations are, and I've run out of dinners. <laughs> and I don't know how that happened. I'm basically not able to just eat whatever I feel like willy-nilly anymore. Strict, strict rationing. Well, I can definitely see why people call this their favorite campsite. The view is incredible. It's day 40. My second last day on the trail. I have such mixed feelings. Like I'm really looking forward to a hot shower and to wash my hair, to wear clo other clothes and eat other food. <laughs> but I'm really sad. I know that once I do all those things, then I'll feel like, okay, ready to hit the trail again. And there'll be no more trail. Oh my goodness, I can see water. That is where the pub is. Well, I'm two pints down and heading to my campsite. My last night on the bib. I'm feeling a little bit emotional about going home and I'm understanding this feeling that people describe where they just want to turn around and start walking the other way again. This has been so good and so good for me. It's been really healing. I haven't been anxious. I haven't worried. I've just woken up excited for every day. And I'm gonna miss this so much. I'm gonna miss the bib. I'm trying to soak up every last second now. As her farewell gift to me, the bib has given me a beautiful, quiet, sun-drenched hut for my last night. How lucky am I? Pub lunch leftovers for dinner? Well, this is it. I'm about to pass a camel farm. I think now decommissioned camel farm. But there's still a camel farm cafe there and that will be my last stop for a quick cup of coffee before Kalamunda. The Trails Hub Cafe was just so sweet to me. The owner Michelle gave me free coffee and a scone to congratulate me for finishing my end to end and that scone was the best scone I've ever had. My last few kilometers and I've hit a burn off uh, which Walkers in the other direction tell me I'm allowed to walk through, but that it's extremely smoky and I may not be able to see very well or breathe very well for a while. So smoky. <laughs> oh, okay, that was actually pretty hectic. I was like a little bit nervous for a minute and a <laughs> Sun's red. <laughs> what a way to finish. Ooh, got the heart pumping. It's really not over till it's over, is it? Two Ks left. Nothing's stopping me now. I did it. Ah.